Glory be to God, my dear brothers and sisters. A warm welcome to one and all of you, and I greet you in the name of our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As always, I'm very, very happy and privileged. It's a great honor that God enabled such wonderful sessions and wonderful time where we could gather together and meditate from the beautiful Word of God. And the Word of God is the only Savior, right? Jesus is our Savior, agreed. But the Word of God is the virtual Savior that could take us towards the divine will and plan of God being fulfilled in our lives. And I really want you to take an account of this. Why? Because many people have lost focus for these reasons that they're not able to understand why they're existing, what is the uh, reason for God sending them all the way to earth and, you know, why they are why they are here and you know many people don't have any understanding of this and that's where every one of us must pay enough attention whenever we enter into the presence of god as why we are there right to show that respect like how uh, god leaves behind a wonderful instruction in leviticus 16 Verses 1 and 2, um, uh, he tells Moses, Hey, don't ask Moses, to, uh, don't ask Aaron to come in inside my presence or inside the holy sanctuary at his wish and will, right? Whenever he desires, he just cannot come barging in like that. There is a protocol he must follow because why? I deserve that respect, I deserve that honor, God says. Yeah. And as long as you understand this, you will definitely appreciate um, God's presence when you enter into his, you know, and, and glory and the honor and the respect he deserves. Right. So many of us don't understand this. And that's why we just don't know what we are doing in our lives. And how many people, you know, want to share this privilege? But then they have lost their privilege. Why? Because they were born in a family that is not allowed, allowing them to touch the Bible. They are bound to the traditions and, and they are not allowed to read Bible. Whereas you and me, we don't have any restrictions, do we? Yet we don't appreciate. All right. Think on these lines each, each time you come into the presence of God. Warm welcome to the series, Genealogy and Evolution of Christianity. We are dealing from the subject of the forgiveness, law of forgiveness. And when you enter into the presence of God, ask for God to forgive your sins. That's one of the important foundational teachings from Jesus. And where we are spending a lot of time is, this is our 52nd uh, session. And uh, we have got a long way to go is what I understand. That's why I'm giving intervals and I'm, you know, doing these sessions um, this was like one, if this were to be converted into a book, this will become a very nice book for all the beginners in Christendom, right? Who, And also some of the long timers in Christendom also will be surprised to um, take a note of few doctrines they might not have paid attention towards, right? And you all need to understand that we, we, we just don't know everything and anything from Bible, right? We all learn. Over a period of time, it's a process, learning process. Over a period of time, you learn. And there is nothing wrong. Don't be at offense. Don't be having that guilt. Don't be having condemnation, self-condemnation. Oh, what an idiot I was and all that. So please, don't have any, any, anything like that. But don't walk like a person who's blindfold, thinking all is well, complacent. Christians who are complacent, right? They, 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 who embraces this complacency, they will never be able to see the glory of God here on earth, nor in heaven. I mean, you won't step into heaven is what I'm saying. Okay. Never think all is well. Closing your eyes and saying the world is dark. That in the mid, 
mid broad day light and <laughs> you say the world is dark because i closed my eyes really <laughs> who are you something is wrong in your head all right so this is what we are trying to reveal and manifest and help you understand bringing to your attention and visibility that why this is important for you to understand the doctrines the instructions the principles the foundational principles uh, from jesus based on which all his teachings uh, were positioned you know all his parables if you were to draw a line or a thread and connect it you would be able to clearly connect it to either of these principles we are stuck with the fifth principle ask for forgiveness other principles to bring to your attention yeah love your god with all your heart matthew 22 37 and uh, you know uh, yeah bless those who persecute you love your neighbors as yourself all those things we discussed and we are stuck with the fifth one law of forgiveness why because that's really versatile the whole christianity evolves with this one law law of forgiveness it's massive i'm on my 30th hour or something like that only on this law of forgiveness i'm moving from new testament to old testament to old testament to proverbs proverbs to psalms psalms to ecclesiastes everywhere we are just moving across and telling you one important thing that hey the mar- that is a mannerism for you to walk on earth before god and when you deal with certain circumstances in life be sure to check whether it is a sin that deserves for pardon and forgiveness or is that as an unpardonable sin that's this is all we are trying to convey through different various teachings from the bible and now we are stuck with icf 52 and icf 53 we are talking from the perspective of the sin bearing servant and it's nothing no none other than jesus uh, on whom we are uh, you know talking spending a lot of time i in the previous session i was able to cover isaiah 52 and verse number 13 where we spoke a little bit about prudence i won't say a little bit a lot about prudence right <laughs> what what it doesn't what it, what it means to walk prudently and what it means to walk um, be, being intelligent and all that right so we spoke on that i don't want to touch upon that so it was jesus who walked like that and therefore it's nice to learn from jesus the way how he walked on earth and verse number 14 just as many were astonished at you so his visage was mad than any man and his form more than the sons of men bare over jesus men uh, the people thronged on him crowd thronged on him bible says you know and bare over he went without making any efforts he gained that popularity why because people were literally astonished is it not the uh, son of um, i mean is this guy not the son of joseph um and how is that he's got this much of wisdom people were astonished and they they mad yeah there is nothing but you know i would say his visage was mad more than any man they tried to bring that spoiled sport towards his um reputation which you also understand right yeah the i mean the meaning of visage was something like this right the face the countenance or appearance or reputation or credibility of a person always they mad mad in the sense they they were trying to pull down that credibility of jesus and ultimately they couldn't win over him and therefore they deployed false accusers right people who accused him falsely and only because of that uh, brutal confessions against jesus and uh, his own disciple betrayed him and all these guys they tied off hands together and then they were able to crack down jesus and obviously they were not following the law of justice right that that is also a i mean when when two nations fight against each other there is a law or there is a rule uh, there are rules to be followed there are war rules they call it as right uh, when the sun sets the war stops they cannot keep fighting against each other when the trumpet bowl blows then when they start fighting against each other this is a, these are the rules right and jesus was absolutely following the rules 
following i mean following the rules and falling by the side of the rules and by the law by the commandments and that's why they couldn't tame jesus and they always deployed people to spy over him um they always deployed people to nag him rag him uh, provoke him to anger kindle his anger kindle his emotions leading him almost to the extent of emotional outburst and uh, what not anything and everything that you go through in your corporate life in your office life in your family life right in your neighborhood your neighbor is a very challenging guy uh, we all go through this kind of problems in our lives right and all of these situations jesus went through is what i'm trying to say is what you need to understand that's why he uh, hebrews 2:18 says that um, jesus was tempted like us at all points wherever he went and uh, people will come to test his spirit and jesus would be able to make out why you hypocrites are testing my spirit they would come and behave to him like an innocent uh, saying oh jesus is it right to pay tax to the caesar or not if he says no they can record that statement and tell the roman guys and they would come and arrest jesus jesus would say you hypocrites how long will you test me bring that coin which coin whose uh, 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 image is in uh, inscri inscription you see here they said caesar give it to caesar what is due to caesar give it to god what is due to god finished man of wisdom man of prudence man of bravery anything you call it right he knows how to handle the situation but he was always adhering in that one commandment oh be angry but do not sin god was jesus was very angry many moments he was he was angry but he would never violate the laws and commandments it's exactly the principle you got to learn from jesus in your life too people would be unnecessarily you know waging war against you and war of words cold war and uh, few people even in your own family how much ever you are good and kind to them they would always try to blame you complain they would never be happy with you finding always fault with you and finger pointing how long would you be uh, tolerating these people i have the same answer to the question what peter asked to jesus how many times should i forgive my brethren seven times he gives a number probably that's a easy one and peter is known for it right he always throws up things <laughs> and he also gets caught the first one to throw up something and first one to get caught very nice man innocent too right and he speaks honestly to his lord jesus and he has that respect also to to whatever extent yeah but yeah poor fellow he denied three times and then after his ministry one of the supernatural ministries that you have ever seen in the history of mankind yeah so if you might have carefully noticed you would have understood by this time that oppositions are quite common quite <laughs> i would say if there is no opposition um at your workplace in your uh, in neighborhood and all that i mean don't roam around looking for oppositions and enemies or oh, nobody is there to fight with me today not like that but if there is no opposition i'm telling you you are actually not walking according to the word of god why because this world is ruled by the ruler of the earth his name is devil and there is no good in him that's what bible says there is always um, you know the problem that you will see in him that he is an adversary to god everything and anything that he thinks of god that he thinks about god or nothing but um an in 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 the, in the perspective of you know uh, rebelling against god and uh, displeasing god uh, disobedient to god he would never ever show that respect by any means and by any chance why because he says hey god you're no way greater than me you're no better than me and in what way i'm inferior to you this is a stone this is his language you want to know more about this take and read as a 14 and take and read as a kill 28 the last uh, 10 or 15 verses talks about the fall of lucifer and how he became devil that's not the way how god creates him yeah and these people will rebel against us that we are the children of god when we walk in light when we walk in the spirit of wisdom spirit of knowledge and spirit of truth then we walk as the believers in christ when we walk across the ends of the earth as torch bearers torch bearers of what reflection of christ like mindset the way how christ walked in truth and in spirit 
we will also walk and also we will walk in humility right when they beat us we won't take the same stone and again throw back it throw it back on their face do you do that how how dare you speak like that <clears throat> how dare you and you give i give i gave them nicely back brother you know what spirit you possess you know the answer by now <laughs> okay <laughs> so uh, that's what i'm trying to tell you um when there is opposition there is a mannerism to handle there is a subtle way that you have to learn from jesus to handle it and therefore avoid emotional outburst avoid see um, i'm been in the corporate world for quite some time a long time i would say more than two decades and earlier we used to talk about time management cost management the stress management and all that now you know what management they are talking about emotional management or em emotions management not emotional management emotions management emotions management is the key aspect to success and if you are not successful in managing your emotions whoever you may be whatever role whatever position whatever uh, qualification whatever degree whatever you may have there is no way that <laughs> you get closer anywhere to success is what the corporates have discovered and that's how they end up uh, you know training uh, many people the employees they of their own companies towards the emotions management and that's exactly what we are reading here from isia uh, 52 and <clears throat> verse number 14 right that they always were playing that spoil sport against the sin bearing servant that is our lord jesus and you read the book of matthew mark luke and john you will clearly understand they always you know the devil especially don't look at blood and flesh right the devil especially deploys his agents to irritate him to provoke him to anger and all that right similarly when you follow the footsteps of jesus you will be also provoked to anger the demons are going to deploy all these days there they would have been friends but the day you carried the bible and you accepted the name of jesus and you made the decision to walk in truth and abide in spirit of god and all that oh they become your adversaries and you know what it hurts your feelings seriously you won't feel good because why you had been thick friends for very long time childhood friends for very long time but because for for my name's sake people will hate you people will torture you people will you know do everything that is against you i mean they don't they don't uh, uh, you know they don't like anything that you do and they always rebel have you seen and you may find trying the reasons initially i'm telling you you are just growing in your spiritual walk with god isn't it um and you are not yet matured you are you have not yet understood the reasons and stuff like that therefore you will start roam around and you will walk around and try ringing up that brother or sister or your friend huh? and then you yeah, what is my fault please explain and all that and again they would hurt you and all that and over a period of time you understand these are the wiles of the devil and you know what no more it hurts your feelings <laughs> why because you understand okay these are nothing but the wiles of the devil these are nothing but the adversaries deployed from the bottomless pit why because you have made the decision to carry the cross and live like jesus walk like jesus talk like jesus behave like jesus and you would be still angry and you will not sin because your fight is not with the blood and flesh you will continue to fast and pray and bind those powers that are operating your friends to become your adversaries i'll tell you what over a period of time these people will come and make peace with you yeah they would understand their fault and i've seen many people coming and reconciling with me for the since they committed against me and uh, you know there are few people even to this day also nothing goes well between me and them <coughs> at what place i mean to say especially you know what happened to daniel right uh, in fact they made the king nebuchadnezzar the guy to issue a decree that is exactly against the principles of daniel because they know that he is going to worship only the lord god right his 
is uh, he shall worship only one god and his god is yahweh and when they issue a decree like that what happens naturally is going to be a violator and offender of the decree passed against the land of uh, babylon and uh, that that is the best chance for them to take revenge and they took revenge and he was thrown into the lions den <sighs> but what happens the lions big bellies turns to be the pillow for daniel and he sleeps perfectly fine in the den <clears throat> and the lions took good care of him yeah probably you know the lions came and licked him and <laughs> were playing with him and uh, yeah they took good care of him they never allowed even an ant to come and bite if the lions are around even the ants are scared they don't come and the next day the king finds out that daniel's god is the god he is the mighty god and you know what all the people who rebelled against daniel were thrown along with their families and just to demonstrate the power and the respect for the man of god versus the people those who worship demons the lions jumped you know yeah lion can you know if uh, a tiger can jump up to the height of an elephant yeah up to 15 or 20 feet they can if they come in full force and if they were to make efforts up to 15 to 20 feet they can jump a cat right normal small cat that can jump up to 10 feet and the lions they really were ferocious hungry whole night hungry because of daniel they were not fed also they were all hungry hungry and they just sprang upon and they torn them into pieces bible says this is how god will tear the adversaries but that's old covenant the new covenant the same god will not allow the adversaries to destruction because that's how your prayer should be right that's how god forgives you each time you commit a sin and those who shall commit sins against you this is the same mentality you will have because you become like god your attitude becomes like christ like attitude christ like mindset and you will na- you will take no pleasure to see the destruction if you are you that new covenant person and still praying from the old covenant standards oh god as how you have revenge took revenge on king saul who was an adversary to king david oh lord please ensure that all my adversaries are brought down to destruction and they will be reading a lot of psalms are there no bringing down your enemies psalm 57 psalm 56 and all this right psalm 58 all these things you will read psalm 91 you will read some 91 for protection which is good but then your adversaries are not your brothers your neighbors your sisters blood and flesh no they are all creations of god you got to pray for them matthew 5 44 43 to 48 jesus said you bless those who persecute you pray for those who have avenged you and all that right but the new covenant standards will make those people as you pray as you pray their heart changes god changes their hearts and they realize and they come and make peace with you even if they don't make peace with you at least they will realize what they have done is wrong and that's enough that's enough they don't have to come and confess because their egos are bigger it's okay we all have egos correct jesus had a positive ego he made a choice definitely not to go and talk to these pharisees pharisees were the one who always came in search of them saying tell us plainly are you the son of god how many times to tell you you stupid fellows Jesus he didn't use the last two words but he was almost sharp like that how many times should i make it clear <laughs> and jesus made a choice definitely not to go because why not about his egos but he made a choice not to waste his time yes that is a positive ego nice but there are negative egos where people doesn't want to come and confess they, they don't like confessing admitting their fault and all that lot of people in your own family you will see such people in your workplace you will see neighborhood you will see in your blood relations you will see which is okay but your prayer god answers because they have a secret conviction in their heart that's enough yeah and uh, it's okay if they don't talk and you are you're not one maharaja that they should come and bow down to you three times on the earth and saying uh, oh we sorry maharaja this is the way how we have sinned against you forget it it's okay as long as what is the objective here the objective here is bringing them to repentance and making them reconcile with god because what they did against you was not right yeah those who shall rebel against the children of god they rebel against god and their sins are not forgiven therefore you pray for them you intercede for them like how jesus intercedes for you and me whenever we sin against god 
sin against Christ, insult Christ, insult the blood covenant, insult the presence of the Holy Spirit. Who are we? Adversaries of Christ. But Christ doesn't consider us as adversaries. He calls us as brothers, sisters. You are my brother. And he intercedes, advocates our case. 1 John chapter 2 verses 1 and 2. Hebrews chapter 1 and verse 3. And Mark 16, last two verses. Talks about Jesus taking his place on the right side of the Father in heaven and interceding for our needs day and night, 24 by 7. In fact, what? 2,000 years, that is his only business. Can you believe? You don't feel bored? I really get bored if I were Jesus. Ah, let me take a break, man. Come on. How long to pray for these guys? Not once would Jesus rise up from his seat. Trust me. Generations, generations. Yeah, tens and thousands of generations have passed after Jesus has been taken into the clouds according to Acts chapter 1. But Jesus would never vacate his place. Yeah, as our intercessor. He's our intercessor, Bible says. Mighty counselor, Bible says. Emmanuel. <coughs> Who is with us, Bible says in Isaiah 9, 6. Yeah. And how much ever we insult, how much ever we do things against God, uh, our, our Jesus, he always reminds us God who is with us. There's a wonderful song, right? Emmanuel, Emmanuel. His name is God, Emmanuel, God with us, revealed in us. His name is God, Emmanuel. This song always reminds me of his tremendous love, which is unimaginable. Beyond my imagination, how could one love someone who sins always against him, thinks always against him, rebels always against him, transgresses against him, treats him as his enemy? How is Jesus able to love? You get an answer for that because he makes the choice to love. Yeah, he prefers to love, nothing else. You thought the answer is going to be very complicated, very simple answer. It's by choice. It's by preference. That you make a decision to forgive the brethren. Love them as how Christ loves us. Forgive them as how Christ forgives us. Verse number 14 is what I read already. Just as many were astonished at you. So his visage was mad more than any man. Yeah, I think Jesus had the maximum number of adversaries more than any kings belonging to any... Uh, uh, era of the in the history of the mankind more than any kingdoms that had developed those adversaries Jesus had more adversaries than what you and I could imagine adversaries in the uh, powers of from the powers of darkness as the prince of air himself is an adversary to him the bottomless pit demons are adversaries to him yeah as if that is not enough almost all the Pharisees Sadducees scribes and uh, you know Herods and the Roman Empire, all of them became his adversaries. What a terrible life to live. That's why Bible says in Isaiah 53, 3, I will read that for you later. Oh, he was a man of sorrow. Sorrow. And acquainted with grief. Not a single day. People allowed him to live happy and joyful. Yet, he never lost the joy of the Lord. Because why? He always extracted that strength from the joy of the Lord. Nothing could disturb him. In fact, the original Aramic version says that acquainted with sicknesses. Yes. We all go through sicknesses. We all go through pain. Nothing could separate him from the joy of the Lord. Joy of the Lord is my strength. He lived according to the principles. Yeah. We sing that song. For the joy of the Lord is my strength. I forgot that song. That uh, Sorry to <laughs> pick up that song and end like this. I'm not. Uh, I don't know the lyrics and also the the tune, I'm, I'm, I, I love that song, but I forgot long ago we used to sing. Yeah, for the joy of the Lord is my strength, Bible says. And Jesus lived according to that principle. And that's the significant difference what Jesus brought on the table compared to any of us. And compared to any of us, Jesus had adversaries. 
but in the midst of that he never went and abused people he never threw tantrums and heresies about people he never ganged the people and devised some secret plans and uh, cunning uh, plans and clever plans and how we could deceive this is how kingdoms work against each other right they deploy their spies and diplomats and they always have that conversation you see how india is dealing with china you see how china is dealing with us you see how us is dealing with russia you will see all of these diplomats and all that they'll keep talking and they'll be sending their spies and agents and all that not today for centuries always the kingdom jesus was not used to any of these man of truth man who walked in the spirit of god that's why god spoke from heaven saying that hey he is my beloved son in whom i am well pleased today if god were to again open up his doors and peep and see if imagine just you were there in the earth only you were there on the earth would would god be able to make the same statement yeah probably your name is joseph hey joseph he is my beloved servant in whom i am pleased your name is elizabeth oh elizabeth you are that sister or sorry you are not sister you are the daughter in whom i am well pleased if god is able to make that statement then obviously you are on the right track if god is not able to make that statement you are not on the right track and when you are not on the right track you are on the wrong track and the wrong track leads you towards the bottomless pit for sure that's where you and i need to take a definite account of these principles what we learn from the life of jesus and that's why i picked up this i was prompted by the holy spirit to pick up this pick up this um isaiah 52 verse 13 onwards right and these are the things which will get you very very closer to god and my brother sister wherever you are listening to me today today make the choice tonight you make the decision that you are going to first of all forgive maybe we are going to close with that yeah and we will continue from verse 15 in the next session onwards you are going to make the decision and two things try to do this you will feel really free of that burden in your heart and i will tell you what there is no way that god's forgiveness towards all your sins are going to be hindered and what do you think when you are not able to let me tell you what are those two things you need to do firstly take a pen and paper and list down all the people whom you hate and you are not able to forgive yeah and if you are not able to call them up because your ego is a problem and you are not able to humble so much and they may take advantage of you fine no problem god will not judge you but then can you please let go of these um hustles let go of these um what to say the, some people instilled grief and hurt some people instilled anger and fury some people instilled vengeance and avenging attitude all of this can you please let it go can you please release it and secondly make a choice the release means what forgive them forgive them saying that god i have done like this many times to you against you did you not forgive me fine no problem let me forgive these people and secondly make a decision only two things make a decision that from now onwards you have no enemies you want to take two papers and write write down your friends list and you take another paper and put it as the entitle it as enemies list of enemies or list of friends and the first paper list of friends and second paper list of enemies you make a choice you will see that second paper empty and empty and empty until your last breath <laughs> not by force but by choice you don't have to force oh if i don't do that god is watching me not like that but by choice as how christ made the choice as how jesus made the choice that no one is his adversary except the powers of darkness that's why ephesians 6:12 says hey our fight is not with the blood and flesh but with the principalities against the principalities and the powers of darknesses are you all with me yeah make the choice make the decision today then tell me why would the forgiveness of god would be hindered to reach out to you. if you don't do, do these two things i tell this uh, always right you ask for forgiveness god's forgiveness cannot reach why because there are so many hindrances so many names whom you have not forgiven or forgotten all that they have done against you and god is also not going to let go of all that you have done against him and these are the hindrances and we are talking from the subject of law of forgiveness understand this clearly understand the rules understand the instructions 
And that's why I picked up this beautiful verse from Isaiah 52 and verse number 14 as how people waged war against Jesus and how he let go. Why? He made that choice always, always. He preferred that choice. Although being the son of man, he, he deserves to go around and beat people hard, kick them left, right, center. But, but he never made the choice. He loved people. He was moved with compassion. And he brought that lady to be stoned. He said, stooping down and writing down. What do you think he was writing down? Writing down all the sins that people committed with their names. <laughs> this is my imagination. Yeah. There were guys like, you know, uh, whoever had names like, you know, um, Adonija, Aaron, and Moses, whatever. Aaron, you did these things. Adonija, you did these things. David, you did this, this thing. He's writing down. Now all these guys are looking what he's writing. Probably, probably they realized, you know, he's going to call out the names and they started slowly slipping off from the crowd. Jesus rises up and says, hey, there is no one. Huh? Uh, yeah, the lady says, no one. Therefore, I'm also not condemning you. Go, therefore, sin no more. Wow. And you know, that sister became a great evangelist. And the history says that she died as a matter for Christ. Wow. Same was Mary Magdalene. Seven demons Jesus cast out of her. And these guys are making movies like Jesus was married to Mary Magdalene. I'm not surprised. Jesus would forgive those people who made those movies also. Why? Because it's the time of grace. But the same Jesus, <laughs> you will see him talking in a different tone. You will not be able to bear that day. That's called as white throne judgment. His eyes will be like eyes of fire and flame. Read John, Revelation chapter 1. Yeah, John had that vision and he fall down like dead man. Because he, this was not the Jesus with whom he walked for 33 and a half years. Because they were cousins. They know each other from birth. He fall down like dead man and Jesus came down. Hey, come on, rise up. It's okay. It's okay. I understand what you're going through. But this is what people will go through when they meet this Jesus. In Revelation 19, Battle of Armageddon and the White Throne Judgment and the Judgment Seat of Christ. Oh, he seats like that King of sits like that King of Kings and Lord of Lords. You will not be able to take that in. While the judgment is being pronounced, you will yourself walk towards the lake of fire because you won't be able to take this in. Jesus, how can you talk like this? I was thinking I will have mercy and grace. Oh, those are all taken off. The time is over. The time of grace is ending soon. The time of mercy is coming down. It's crumbling down. It's crashing down. And these are the last, last days, you know, the last days. Matthew 24, he talks, he gives the signs and the, of the last days, right? Just check with your newspaper and media and all that. And you know what is happening. All the six seals, seven seals are opened. The destructor is at work. The destroyer is at work. Just that, you know, that Jerusalem temple will have to be built and he will be there. And before which rapture happens. All right, be close with this and we will continue from our next session. God bless you. Some of you have started to sweat. <laughs> Don't be horrified. Be happy because why? You got to know the truth now and you have a second chance. You have another chance to live your life for God. Don't worry, brother, my sister. If you're sweating, that's good. You're so horrified. You're so trembling in fear. Today, make those two, two choices. I'm teaching you. Being God's servant, I'm telling you this. Make those two choices and reconcile with God and do the right things. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this wonderful time and opportunity. What a wonderful teaching, O oh Lord, from Isaiah 52 and verse 14. And we learned a lot of principles from our Lord Jesus. And may we, may we adhere to these principles and help us, Holy Spirit, to get these implemented in our life. May it become our lifestyle and practice. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. God bless you. Subscribe to our channel. Get access to all our playlists. And share it with your friends, near ones, dear ones. And also make your time to listen to these videos. These are only going to help you. And this is going to refine your character. Yeah, nurture you. All right. Continue to pray for my ministries. I'm your brother. And pray for my health. Pray for my long life. Pray for time, importantly, that I should get more time to preach and teach the word of God. God bless you. Amen.